I thought before we did too much more of a teardown on this engine, we would start looking at some of the parts just briefly on what they are, what their functions are, how, how they uh, interact with each other. Uh, I thought we'd start with the blower housing. The blower housing does so much. It, it has so many different functions. Uh, the first thing is it has, again, the stamp numbers on the front so that we can specifically for this engine get replacement gaskets or replacement any parts for it that uh, we may need in, at a future time. Another thing that it does is it tells us where in the manual uh, to find our torque specifications for tightening down the different bolts. It also has our starter motor in it. If you'll notice, these pawls that are pulled out, okay, they fit on a cup on the flywheel. They go in here. So as you pull it and the pawls come out, it's going to turn this flywheel for us. Another thing the blower housing does is it has a unique shape. And working in conjunction with our flywheel and these fins, it's going to be blowing air uh, around our cooling fins. It's going to be blowing air around our cooling fins on the cylinder and the head, dissipating the, the heat so that it doesn't overheat. That's why it's crucial that you never run one of these small engines without the blower housing on it or you'll destroy the engine quickly. Okay. Another thing that the blower housing does with the uh, flywheel is it operates our weather vane here. And that's done with this weather vane right here. As this flywheel spins, it creates more wind, which pushes this weather vane back, okay? And then the springs will bring it back as this slows down. So again, with the blower housing and the flywheel and the governor's uh, vane, it all works together. This is for controlling the constant speed of the engine. It works in conjunction with our governor spring and our idle spring. And we're going to get more into this, but this weather vane goes straight to the throttle, which will control, again, the speed of the engine. Now, a lot of people uh, don't understand that the governor isn't designed to keep the engine from over-revving. It's to maintain a constant speed. For example, when you're mowing and you hit high grass, you want that engine to be turning at the same speed as if it were uh, cutting just normal, regular height grass. You'll also notice that our flywheel is made of aluminum. On a lawn tractor, it would be made of cast iron. And what I'm getting at is we're talking about mass now. We have a piston that's going up and down, and we have to maintain that piston uh, momentum. And the aluminum flywheel isn't heavy enough to do that. So most people don't realize that our flywheel and our lawnmower blade are actually part of the flywheel. That's why you should never run one of these small engines without the lawnmower blade on it, because it's actually part of our flywheel. These fins are very carefully designed. You'll notice that they're not the same height and there's different uh, shapes to them. When these things were spinning, they were getting a, a whistling sound and the engineers came up with changing the shapes and that would change the uh, harmonics of it so it didn't get really loud. Very clever. Inside the flywheel are magnets. 
And as the flywheel spins, it's going to be coming in front of a coil. And as the magnets pass in front of the coil, it's going to build up a magnetic field. And as it goes past the coil, it's going to collapse that magnetic field and send a charge to our spark plug. That's how we get our ignition. We also have, that's one type of timing, an electric timing. We also have a mechanical timing that's maintained with this uh, cutout right here and the flywheel key. Okay. You're going to learn more about that uh, later on, but that's going to maintain our mechanical timing. That's when the optimal time for the fuel to be ignited. Okay, that's where the pistons at the right place, the valves are at the right place, and the electronic timing when the spark should occur at the right time. And that's maintained with this key. So let's real quick, so that we don't get ahead of ourselves, uh, just uh, show the overview of the parts. There are three main castings, the crankcase, the sump cover, and the head. Then we have a crankshaft, a flywheel, and a piston. Of course, we have the muffler. We have two seals that ride on either end of the crankshaft. They, of course, go in the crankcase casting right here. and the sump cover right here. Then we have a gear that fits on our crankshaft. Like so. And that turns our camshaft. The camshaft as it spins is going to be lifting up our valve lifters, just like that on these lobes. And as they do that, they'll be compressing and releasing these springs, opening our valves. We also have an oil slinger, and I hooked some air so that you can see exactly how well this thing works. Can you imagine that? Inside the engine, throwing all the oil into the little orifices that we need. Very effective. Then we have our crankcase breather valve that we discussed yesterday. And of course our piston with our connecting rod. Pretty amazing. Well this is a 3D representation of our engine that we just took apart. We have the flywheel and the lawnmower blade again for the mass to keep this thing uh, going. We have a crankshaft with our uh, piston and our connecting rod. We have a gear here that is half the uh, radius of this gear. This is our camshaft gear and this is our oil slinger. And the camshaft moves our two tappets okay, that push up and down our valves right here allowing fuel into the head and exhaust out of the head. And this is our head with our spark plug. And I know it's very basic, but this is pretty much the internal workings of that engine. 